in this video we are going to get a uh, tour of uh, Badge's rig. Sorry if it's uh, a little wind noise, there's nothing I can do about Mother Nature. I do have some very heavy duty uh, wind muffs on there. So Badge, take it away. What do we got? Okay, so this is a basic system. Like I'm not saying this is perfect, but we live 365 days a year in this trailer and this system powers everything except the air conditioner and the hot water tank. Yes, it does run the microwave. So, okay, so what we got here is we got a, a Canadian Tire 3000 watt inverter. Now, you can get them from Schumacher or anything. They're all about the same. This is 3000 watts and it surges to 5000. And it works pretty good. Now, up above, in behind here, you'll see four golf cart batteries. Those are golf cart batteries, not RV batteries. These are the black ones, which are the Trojan Commercial, which is the same battery. And those uh, lead acid, lithium ion? Yeah, these uh, are AGM. flooded. These are flooded lead acid? Yeah, these okay. are lead acid batteries. Now, <laughs> the reason for that is because this is the pinnacle. Everything is either better or less. This is what it's set on. Is it? So these ones here, now, you got to just give and take a bit, but they say that they'll last for 10 years, so I don't think no if I'll outlive so these six batteries. Volt, so 6 volt, how many amps? These are 100, 100 amp golf cart batteries. And you have how many? Four of them. Alright. Right? Yep. So they're all tied together. Now the trick to them is, is you have to have them tied together in series, and then you tie them together in parallel, and the positive comes off one side, and the negative comes off the other side. Don't put the positive and negative on the same pack or it won't, the other set will go dead. Don't ask me why, that's just what happens. So positive off one set, negative off the other set. The negative is grounded to the truck because we will we'll show you how it's charged when we're driving down the road. This here basically is the same setup that you would find in a coach because we have no room in the trailer for the batteries and all that, so we put it all on the truck. And then when I pull both trailers, I have solar. So yeah, so you got four golf cart batteries and everything, the minimum cable is uh, two watt, right? For the, tie the batteries to the charger. Now you see this blue one here, this blue wire here is the charge wire that's a four watt, or uh, sorry, a four, gauge four, and it runs all the way to the front, to the charging system. We'll show you that in a minute. To the isolator. Yeah, to the isolator. So es essentially the whole solar system is in the back of the pickup truck, so you can yeah. swap out your two different trailers and have yeah. solar power anytime. Exactly. Cool. Okay, so these wires here. Now, this is where the difference of opinion comes, because in the United in the U.S. they have bigger cables. In Canada, because everything we use is from Canadian Tire, we use these small cables. Do they work? Yes. Are they perfect? I don't know. All I know is that it works. And we have four panels on the roof, which comes down to a charge controller from Coleman. And this one here is not as fancy as some of the Renegade stuff and all that, because this one here only charges, tells you um, voltage and current. It doesn't tell you how much you're using or none of that stuff. So that's why it's in the back of the truck. This one here, we can change it from lead acid to gel because, you know, you have to charge them different. And then we have one extra one here, which I have a um, another 100-watt uh, panel that I put down. So, basically, I could have 500 watts charging this at any time. So, if you just look up on the top there, Jack, you'll see the, the four panels are up there. Yep. These are all bolted together, these panels. They're all the same. They're about $380. You always wait for stuff to go on sale at Canadian Tire. They're $380 bucks from Canadian Tire for two. Now, they don't come with a charge controller, so that's the difference. Because some will say that it's 100 watt and it'll come with a charge controller, which is 500 and some bucks. And these are 380 on sale and you get two. That's why you don't come with a charge controller. The two back ones lift up. Okay, so when you park in the sun, you can lift them up, and believe it or not, it will bring it up about, on a sunny day, anywhere from 10, 10 to 12 amps, or, yeah, amps, just by lifting them and aiming them at the sun. 
This truck is never in Alberta. We get 18 hours of sun in the summertime. In the summertime, we never, ever charge these batteries. Ever. Never. The only way we'll ever charge them is if we get sun, uh, gray or rain for five or six days. But you got to remember, as soon as we start the truck, we start charging. So that's a bonus. This is the system here. It's very simple. And I'm going to cut out all the crap for you because people won't tell you this stuff. So anyway, this is the alternator. This is the alternator coming in. And this goes through two batteries. Now the reason you do this is because there's a diode in here and when you kill your batteries in the back it won't kill your truck battery. That's what that's designed for. This here is a 90 amp battery isolator. So, and so, here, that, so that means for the person who doesn't know what an uh, isolator 90 is. 90 amp alternator, what it'll do is it'll let 90 amps go through without causing any problems, right? So They, they have 90 and they have 120. I didn't think I needed 120. This one here, usually when it's running, will put 65 amps to the back. So that's more than enough. So, right? in very simple terms, this is a battery charger that runs off of the engine for the exactly. solar. That's exactly it. See, now this one here that goes on the alternator to here, you unhook the one that comes from the back. It's right here, it's taped up. Because that one comes from here to the battery. Now, everybody says you just connect this your back battery up to a solenoid and turn it on. No, that's not true. Because what you got is you got thir anywhere from 13 to 14 and a half volts going to this terminal, and it goes to the weakest link, right? Where if you got these batteries tied together, like you would only get 13 and a half, whatever. Now, if this battery's full, you might get a little bit, but this way it's forcing it to the back battery. So that's why I use an isolator over a, um, a relay. Or if you put the relay on, you got to make sure that this charge wire is set up the same way through an isolator because if the battery goes dead, you have to be able to take the power from the alternator and put it to a dead battery. And an isolator is the only way to do it. You can't do it with a relay. Sorry, I know it's going to burst a whole bunch of bubbles, but you can't do it. You have to have an isolator. 13 in here, 13 out here, 13 out here. This one's full, 13 out here, and none out here. So it'll t it'll do that. It's got a it's got a diode, and a diode is basically a gate. You can go through, but you can't go back. So right? ba so what you're saying is it basically it charges one until it's full, and then it goes to the other and charges that, and then it charges them both at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it's self-controlled. Yeah, self-controlled. You can't do nothing. It's just idiot proof is all it is, right? And all this blue wire is four gauge or four gauge and it runs right back to the batteries. That's why you have to ground your solar batteries in the back because if you don't ground the solar batteries you put 12 volts to it where's it gonna go? It doesn't make a circuit. So you have to ground the solar batteries so that it makes a circuit, right? So it goes in this, it comes in this wire, out this wire to the batteries and to the frame. It makes a big circuit, right? But if you don't have a circuit, it won't charge. That's why a lot of people have issues with their solar that it doesn't charge, right? We'll show you another trick on the back after. But this, this is the way to go, the isolator. Now the biggest thing on an RV, RV trailer is the batteries for the 12 volt. Now no, they're not the same. These are 12 volt for the trailer only. This runs your heater and all your lights and everything and you know exactly what's going to happen the battery's going to go dead well these are 12 volt or 6 volt golf cart batteries these two batteries will run the heater all night so that's why we put two sixes on here they're tied together and they're charged from the truck and they're charged from um, solar and by heater he means the uh, the fan for the propane heated heater yeah. See, so, a lot of people don't use, they use a little buddy. I said, well, I bought a heater, I want to use the darn thing. So that's how you do it. <laughs> Is it cheaper than buying a little buddy? I didn't say that. I just said it works better. Because <laughs> the batteries are more than what the heater buddies were. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what this, you'll see these, you know, somebody's going to ask, what this is for? This is connected so I can connect the battery charger to it. And while we're on the battery chargers, the only battery charger that you ever use is what they call a smart charger. 
This is the Canadian Tire one, but Schumacher makes the same thing. Okay, 15 amps max. And this one here will tell you your capacity and it will do it automatically or you can put it on 15 amps. That is the most you ever charge your batteries, 15 amps. If you have to wait, you have to wait. Do not, because that's where you get batteries getting twisted panels or uh, cells and all that stuff go shorty. So 15 amps, that's it. That's all you use. And then, that's, uh, uh, that's the only battery charger I have on me. And I charge everything up with it, no and, problem. And then besides that, you also use a little generator for backup? This generator is, now I'm not saying this is a perfect one, I'm saying this thing works really good. You can buy a lot, that's all you, I need. That's all I need to keep this going if there's no daylight. Or sunlight, I mean. So, that's a 2000 watt inverter. You can't hear it run, you can park right beside the trailer and it won't. Now the trick to it is, is that if you plug that in to your trailer and turn on, because when you find out your solar, you'll, you got to find out exactly what everything draws. Like the fridge draws 450 watts, the charger draws 250 watts, the television draws 100 watts. So you have to know what that number is so you can charge accordingly, right? Now, I never use the generator to watch TV. It's always run off the solar. But anyway, for this, if I hook it to this trailer, and it'll go into high speed because it'll charge about around the 1300 watts with the fridge going and the TV going and the battery charger. <coughs> but if I hook this to the battery charger, which I in turn hook to the batteries in the solar, and I put 15 amps into the solar batteries, I charge the batteries up solar. Now that's only 2,000 watts. The solar's 3,000 watts, so I can run the trailer more off solar than I can the generator. Don't ask me why, it's just the way it works. And so what I do is I hook the battery charger to the solar, charge up the solar batteries. And then I hook the trailer through this cord, which we'll show you, and I turn on the battery charger in the inverter, because or on the converter. Now the converter is just um, a row 120 and a row 12 with a battery charger. That's all it is. When I have this hooked to the truck, I never uh, hardly unhook it when we drive down the road. So what I have is this blue road, this blue cable here. The blue cable comes across here to a one a 15 amp plug, which goes into the <coughs> converter and plugs in. Now it plugs in exactly the same spot as this one here. Hang on. The audio is not going to get that, but... It's the same as this one here, except this is 30 amp. That one up front is only 15. Now when you think about it, you're going to say, what the hell has he done? 90% of the time these trailers run on less than 15 amps. Unless you got your microwave on and your air conditioner and the furnace and or, or the fireplace and all that, they don't draw nothing. They very little because the biggest thing that draws power is a heater, and that's 12 volt or your lights. They're 12 volt, so it's, it's not a big deal. Most trailers are coming with a 15 amp plug now, and that saves you a ton. Like I, I never hardly ever use this plug anymore because it always plugs into the front. Okay, if you see this cord here, it goes up underneath here, goes up and plugs into the inverter right there. <coughs> yes, that gets you away from the propane thing, because everybody's scared about driving down the road in propane. Turn the thing on auto, and, it's on, and it'll, it'll take power out of your solar, but you're charging it anyway. You're charging more than what it's using, because it only uses like, about seven and seven and a half amps or something going down the road. So it's not a big deal. So this trailer is always plugged in with this cord. And then if I go to a campground and want to use the air conditioner, I'll put the 30 amp on, but I've never put it on yet for a long time. So yeah, right. that's basically the solar system. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying it's the greatest thing, but it works for us. And it's just, just around the $3,000 mark, which, when you mention solar, people start to starting at five, and it works really good. Like we sat out in Arizona from November till now, 
and we were never plugged in, so it must work. And we make coffee in the morning, Al does her hair in the morning, and we use the microwave for supper, and we watch TV, and it all works. So you don't need a whole bunch, you can never have enough solar, but you don't need a whole bunch of solar. All right, now we're moving on into the uh, interior. So what do we have here? This is a coffee press. <laughs> that Jack give us that even worse. Okay, what we got here is a Flagstaff WFKSS, which means it's got a front kitchen and two slides. So we'll show you the slide. Now if you back up, you'll see the kitchen. This is probably one of the best kitchens on the planet for an RV. You got everything right here. Stove, microwave, fridge, the double sink, and you even got the oven. So you got lots of cupboard space. Tons of cupboard space all around, all through here. This one here is just huge right to the center. And then you got this, this is all Corian. The countertops are all Corian. And the stove is uh, level with the counter, which is kind of cool. So yeah. And then we have the living room. Now, when you look at this and you look at the one the factory, you're going to say, what did you do? Okay, so you know everybody changes stuff to make it work for you, right? Right here there was two stools. They come out. We put this in here. This is the original table, but if you got it, this is made to go down and make a bed. It wobbles. This got a singer under it. It don't wobble anymore. We got rid of the wobble. So my brother came up with this idea. We didn't. We wanted to make a living room, which we got here with two chairs, right? So they've made it so you put the chairs here and look at the TV. Well, how can you do that? So what we did was there was a couch here. We don't need it. Out it went. Took the dinette, that's my brother's idea, Billy's idea, and slid it to the wall. Patch, come here. Come on. And that's Patch's bed. Okay, we got a fireplace. <laughs> Which works pretty good. It'll it'll work so good that it'll turn the heater off. So you gotta wash when you're that's using it. Very that. lifelike. Very lifelike. Right, Willie? Billy, that's really lifelike. <laughs> okay, so we got this big screen TV. Now this is hooked up to the DVD player and it's hooked up to uh, satellite if you want it. We don't have satellite. This is the stereo which has got you play your um, videos through here for your TV. It's got SD cards, USB, you can do everything with this. Plus it's got Bluetooth for music. Not for your phone, but for music. Okay, and then behind here we have the Jeffy Tech Wi-Fi repeater, which we're two miles from Rufus, Oregon, and we just about had enough signal. And this is the uh, uh, WeBoost. Wilson, we boost. We got that too. Now what I did with that was I hooked that up to satellite, so then I take the antenna and hook it to satellite. Cupboards galore. Every all the lighting in here is 12 volt. Every one. Every one's 12 volt. This is the bathroom, sink, toilet. Now we change the toilet. Now a couple people asked about toilets, and yes, we changed the angle on it. And all you do is go to Home Depot or Lowe's and they have a set of screws that screw in and you can move wherever you want. This here we put a valve on here for when you're boondocking you can turn the water off. Because everything's controlled by water, right? This is the number one thing right here is uh, uh, shower head. Uh, I gotta remember what name of it is now, but that shower head is cut your water. Ox the off. oxygen thing, right? Huh? Oxygen? Uh, yeah, oxygen, yeah. Ox ox oxygenetics yeah. or something? Oxygenics. Oxygenics, that's what it is. And, of course, this is the bedroom. And if you notice, it's got the two coffee tables on the side where we drink coffee for two hours in the morning. And this is, the whole slide goes out. This is a closet. This whole closet, the bed goes underneath here. And the good part about this trailer is when it's folded up the slides... You can still get to the bathroom, kitchen, fridge, everything. 
That's why one of the reasons we bought it. That's why it's like a lot of when you look into a trailer and you're living in it, you want and especially on the road, you want to make sure that you can get out the stuff when it's folded up because you're going down the road, you want to put your food in it. You put the you gotta have it open up, right? You don't have to open it up every time. So yeah. We only wanted the one mirror, so we put a decal of the dog on it. So yeah. Put this in here, this bookcase. But other than that, we haven't bought much here. This is coming with, with the TV. It's all plumb satellite. And it's hooked up to everything up front. The DVD player and everything else. Central flooring heating. 35,000 BTU heater. Runs up the middle. Works pretty good too. See, we use our heater. A lot of people don't use the heater because of propane and all that. We use it. We put the bigger batteries on the front to make up for so that we can run it all night. And we don't have a problem with it. The air conditioner... Is ducted air conditioning, but we never use air conditioning, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, that's it in a nutshell. We love it. We live in it 365 days a year, so it's it's pretty nice.